One of the easiest ways to install Python is to get the Anaconda distribution. So I'm going to go to Anaconda download, search for that in Google, and here is the individual edition, and there is download. And later on in the video, I'll show you how to install it just from the python.org as well. We'll have Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. I'm going to pick the 64-bit graphical installer, and it will download this. Okay, once it's finished downloading, we can close the web page. Okay, we'll open this up, get it running, and let's go ahead and just install this. Okay, we'll agree. I like to do it just for me, just so you don't have to have administrative privilege when you want to install packages. Okay, the default option looks good. All right, and then if you want to install that to your path environment variable, you can. That's not recommended. Okay, it's going to install it, and then I'll open it up and show you some of the features that you can use with this. We have Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, Spider, and a couple others that are optional. So the difference is that Spider is a more like an integrated development environment, similar to Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook, they'll both run the Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, Jupyter Lab is a more recent environment that has been developed. It's going to be the future Jupyter Notebook. Although I still like to use the Jupyter Notebook for most of my development work. Uh, somehow just having a simple web page is uh, very nice. All right, there's also other environments like PyCharm. And as I mentioned, um, you know, we have all these different notebooks. We can also go to python.org, install Python, and then add packages like Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. All right, just setting up the base environment, compiling some of the packages. You can show uh, the details. All right, now this is Python 3.8. Even though 3.9 is out and 3.10 is under development right now. One of the reasons why they go with a slightly lower version is just for package compatibility. So one of the nice things about Anaconda is a lot of the packages are installed for you and so you don't need to install them yourself. So now if we search, um, let's just go to Jupyter Notebook. Okay, it's a funny spelling for Jupiter with the Y here. Uh, and so if you select that, it's going to open up this command window. Don't close this one or it will uh, stop the kernel. It will become unresponsive. All right, if I go to desktop, I can create a new Python 3 notebook and type something like print hello world and then control enter to run it. And then you'll see that it's created here this untitled IPYMB. And if you want to, for example, open it up, um, you know, you can open it up with like a text editor if you want, um, you know, and, and look at it. Okay, so if I open up Notepad, And let's just look at this file. You'll see that um, it's it's uh, right here. It's untitled.ipymb, so it's just a text file. It's a JSON file full of all of the cells. All right, and let's see if I can open with. Doesn't look like it uh, allows me to open with, so I'm just going to show you this now. Now that I've saved it and drag this in here. It will have the code that I had, okay, right here as part of my cell. So that's what a Jupyter Notebook is. It's uh, Now let's go back here. I'm going to go ahead and close this one out and this one. And then let's see if we can start up uh, Jupyter Lab as well. So you see it doesn't have kind of the same shortcut. So what we'll go is uh, there's an Anaconda prompt and you can start it from the Anaconda prompt. And so if you do Jupyter Lab, it's also going to start uh, the program, or you can do Jupyter Notebook. 
All right, so here is a Python 3 notebook or a console. And you can go to the desktop, for example, and open up our Hello World that we just created. And I'll discard those changes. All right. Or you can come back to your Anaconda, and this is the Anaconda Navigator. So this one's the easiest one to use to launch programs. And you're going to see it initialize, and then it's going to pop up with uh, a couple different options. All right, so you can either use you know, Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, uh, and it gives you the ability to launch those. Or it's also going to give you um, the Spider, okay, Spider Integrated Development Environment, which is also uh, very nice as well. Somehow it's a little bit hung up right here. Okay, it's just loading for the first time. And so I'll show you Spider as well. So I've shown you Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, and now I'll show you Spider. Okay, the very first time it pops up, you'll check for updates. Um, and if you get to hello world, okay, the nice thing about this is it'll pop up with tips for you as you're typing your code. It'll have parentheses highlighting, so some nice things beyond what the notebook offers. Okay, if you just execute in the current console and then run it, you'll see hello world. All right, so that is uh, Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab and Spider, all installed um, from this Anaconda Navigator. If you need to install additional packages, you can do that a couple different ways. The way that I like to do it is just go to Anaconda Prompt, and then from here you can do pip3 install gecko, for example. And it's gonna go out and get that package and install any dependencies that it needs as well. The other way to do that, now this isn't as recommended, but you know if you have a number of different um, you know environments installed, one of the easiest ways to install it for that environment, especially if you're using a Jupyter notebook, is just open this up and all right, we have this untitled notebook. I'll go ahead and just do shift enter. It'll create a new cell. And so you can do pip install, and then you can do something like uh, TC lab. And then it's gonna go out and install that package. Again, it's better to do it from the Anaconda prompt, but this is one way that you can do it. And if you don't want it anymore, okay, so you have to uh, restart. Uh, let me not run all. I'll, uh, restart and clear all outputs. So that's one thing you have to do to have it recognize that. And then you can go uninstall TC Lab. Okay, and then it's going to uninstall the package TC Lab. After this uh, starts running, then you'll see it uh, print out a message here that it, it uninstalled. I'll also show you how to see all of the different packages that are installed in Python as well. You can do pip list, uh, pip install, pip uninstall are the common uh, commands. Okay, for some reason this is hung up. You can see the asterisk here, it means it's still running. And sometimes what we can do is we can, uh, looks like, hmm, the kernel is not there. I may have closed that uh, window that was there, so we're going to have it. Uh, it's frozen at this point. Okay. No, I didn't do that. Okay, let's just try it again. I'll open it up again and let me try to run this one more time. So you can see it's frozen right now. For some reason, it's not, it's not working. And so I'm going to go back to the Anaconda prompt. Okay, and this one is. Uh, Let's go pip uninstall tc lab. Okay, so one of the reasons why it was frozen is because it was asking this question, and we'll go uh, yes, 
you can get around that here if you um, just reply yes I believe that's the case let me just see if that's uh, that works I remember there's something I'd have to look on stack overflow for that uh, response but if it requires a response it'll look like it's hanging up here all right so there it is how to add or remove packages and you can also do pip list and that gives you a full list of all the packages with also the uh, version numbers okay so you you have a listing of everything that's in the anaconda distribution and package and version number all right i'm going to show you an alternative way to install um, let's see let me go ahead and just quit these and then un delete the ipython notebook so if you go to python.org these often have a more up-to-date version so for example if you wanted to use python 3.9.1 uh, you're going to see that there's some packages that are not compatible. So, for example, uh, scikit-learn. If you look on PyPy, which is the package distribution, you'll see that uh, scikit-learn is available right now 3.6, 3.7, 3.8. You might be able to compile it yourself for something like uh, 3.9. Okay, but um, I've this is an example of a package that isn't quite ready yet for the latest release and so sometimes what we do is we uh, just install an earlier version so instead of just installing this one you can try it but uh, we might run into uh, some problems but let's go ahead and just try it um, maybe this is an earlier version or sorry the latest version one of the things I like to do here is um, instead of just installing it to this path, it's very hard to find that to add it to your path later. So I like to customize this and then install it to Python 3.9. I don't select install for all users, although I am putting it in the root directory. If you want to, you could do uh, users and then your username alright something like this um, actually let me go to this PC so probably a little bit safer alright so there's Anaconda 3 let's go ahead and just put it here as well so it doesn't really matter uh, where you put it but uh, it's good to if you're installing different versions just to keep those in separate directories Okay, we'll also select this add Python to environment variables. I'll show you how to set that up as well. Okay, this one's a much smaller distribution. You notice with the Anaconda distribution, that was about a half a gigabyte. And this one is uh, much smaller. And it is, let me just see the properties here, 26 megabytes. So it's definitely you can install what you need. You don't have to have all of those packages there. Okay, we're going to add that to path. All right, and you can also disable path length limit. Well, I've never really um, had a problem with that. So if you need that, you can select it. All right, so let's go to environment variables, edit the system environment variables, and that will come up with uh, this window right here. Uh, that lets you edit the environment variables. Now, you can do it just for John H, or if you want to do it for system, for everybody, you can come down here and do it for the path. You don't want to mess this up. Uh, they've done a good job, though, making it, um, you know, it's easier than it used to be. All right. Um, here I can see what they already installed for me. You have uh, C users, John H, Python 3.9 scripts. C users, John H, Python 3.9. So that's nice. I'll, I'll leave that one there. Uh, that's just the environment variables for me and then the environment variables for all the users. All right, so if I open up a command window now, this is not the Anaconda prompt. I'll just pin this to the taskbar just so we can have it. And when I open it up, I can 
uh, do uh, Python version, and that's Python 3.9.1. And then if I do pip3 install numpy, okay, I needed the scripts folder there in my path to be able to use this. And so you'll see numpy is installed, but let's go ahead and do Python uh, m pip install upgrade pip. All right, so that upgraded it. It'll get rid of that warning that you see. All right, and then we can go and install uh, some of our more common packages. Okay, I like to use pip3 just to differentiate if there's a Python 2.7 on the computer. It make sure it solves it for Python 3 instead. All right, so let's try SciPy. Now, these base packages are typically compatible, but once we get up to scikit-learn, uh, last time I tried a couple days ago, it wasn't working with scikit-learn, but we'll just see if it works now. All right, and then there's going to be some others as well, like matplotlib, uh, pandas. Um, let's see, we had uh, gecko, one that I develop. All right, so it's going to get all the dependencies for those and install them. All right, it takes just a little bit to compile and to install those. All right, and then the test is going to be the scikit-learn. Okay, let's do scikit uh, sklearn. Okay, and let's just see if this one will work. Oh, it's successfully installed. That's fantastic. So um, it's been updated. Okay, and then let's do some others as well. Let's do uh, Jupyter Lab. Oh, uh, Let's see, is it Jupyter Lab? I think that's what it's called. Okay, so there we have Jupyter Lab now, just like we had with the Anaconda distribution. But now we've installed it with the python.org distribution. You can see a number of different dependencies there that it's also installing. Okay, so we see all of those installing uh, quite a few packages. Uh, and if this is successful, then we should be able to launch uh, Python 3.9.1 uh, with Jupyter Lab instead of the Python 3.8.6. All right, so let's just try that, Jupyter Lab. Okay, so it was successful. We have uh, Jupyter Lab starting, and this is a nice integrated development environment. We have Python 3. I'll go to desktop, and uh, we can create a new. Okay, this is untitled 1.ipoimb. All right, I'll go ahead and leave that, and I'm just going to do Control C a couple times, shut down the kernel, and let's go ahead and install. Um, notebook as well and it looks like all of those were already satisfied Jupyter Lab may have already installed those all right so that is it for installing uh, Jupyter Lab Jupyter Notebook uh, spider and there are other environments as well like uh, PyCharm although I don't typically use that one I know a lot of others that uh, like to use PyCharm as an integrated development environment. Right through JetBrains, it has a professional and also a community addition to that.